Call 911 in New York City. That could be your first responder. Call 911 to get a drone. It is happening, at least as a test. Drones will be soon used as first responders in New York City. It's a new pilot being tested by the NYPD for select 911 calls in specific boroughs. These drones. It's happy Bitcoin Pizza Day. It's happy Crypto Day because it feels like the politics of crypto are shifting. And what I mean by that, it's, you know, crypto had started to look like a small group of Democrats were just stopping any progress in, in regulation and in the industry. And for a bunch of reasons, President Trump saying he's the crypto president, he's accepting crypto donations, and realizing there's a vulnerability here in the election year, uh, the Democrats are responding pretty quickly. And we're seeing things that I couldn't have dreamed of two weeks ago happening at a very rapid speed speed and that's that's really setting the table for a uh, a really exciting you know few years in this industry let's start with bitcoin the fact that the government approved an etf that larry fink the largest asset manager in the world is out there saying this should be part of every portfolio this is digital gold uh as long as the government keeps spending recklessly bitcoin should go higher uh you know, it, there, you can't get much more institutional than that. We're partnered with Invesco and in, in, in in an ETF, both in Bitcoin. And, and now it looks like the Ethereum ETF is going to get approved this week, maybe as early as tomorrow. And so for the two biggest products to have the stamp of approval uh, from the U.S., at one point, what are you scared of? Uh, well, you've got the, the richest person in Massachusetts, Abby Johnson, who's been a huge crypto fan and a big advocate. The richest person in Pennsylvania, Jeff Yoss, big crypto fan. Uh, you can go around Stan Druckenmiller, Ray Dalio. Some of the best investors in the world recognize that Bitcoin's an asset that should go higher. And so I just keep asking the question, what are you scared of? Is this a sell the news event? Uh, no, I don't think it's a sell the news event, although we probably got a lot of the initial kind of excitement out of the way. Ethereum's really been underperforming everybody else. It's just, and everybody's kind of left it for dead. So I think you had a big short covering rally. But in general, what this has done is changed the landscape for crypto, particularly pot uh, politically uh, in this country. So uh, in beginning of May, Trump was asked a question about crypto. And he said, if you want crypto, vote for Trump. That clip went viral and actually changed things in Washington. We saw multiple votes over the last several days that were pro-crypto. The president said he was going to veto those and then kind of backed off. So I think there's been a sea change here in the regulatory environment, and it's a welcome one from the industry. It's much more optimistic. And then what we're seeing is the SEC is starting to amend these S1s. Uh -huh. So I don't know if the Ethereum ETF gets approved today, you know, next week or the right, week right. after. It will get approved at some point in time, but also the trade now now is who's next, right? Exactly. Who's who is in? next? Because, so, it, it, you know, yeah. and, and I was talking about yesterday. Now it's almost time for truly my my ETF, my blended ETF of which, you know, yep. which crypto asset it is. And, and so who is next, though? I mean, I think you've got to think about Solana as probably the next one, right? I mean, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana are probably the big three for this cycle. Um, but I'll give you even a stranger, or maybe not stranger, but a, maybe an unintuitive way to think about it, Robinhood and Coinbase. Because now we have some clarity about what a security is and what isn't. And they'll be able to list a lot more crypto, which means a lot more trading for them. So I think they're the biggest beneficiaries from the change that's gone on. I think, I don't know if it's $11 billion now or what it is. Will that go back into crypto? Will it go into Bitcoin? Where is it going to go? Yeah, I, I do think it's most of that money is crypto native, right? So it's crypto funds, people that are investing in this. So I do think most of that money will come back in. What we've seen so far is a lot of private deals. There were a lot of private deals in Solana that's happened over the last month where investors in F, or, or the, uh, the receiver in FTX was selling Solana to investors. So I think that what's going to happen is it'll just be recycled in. There may be some of it that kind of leaks out to the side, but I would think most of that money stays in the crypto ecosystem. Um, a couple different ones. You can look at some of the AI coins, so something like a Fetch AI, there, that's been really well. And then what's been hot recently is what we call the professor coins, so ones that have kind of been developed by professors at universities, so Avalanche is one of those, AVAX. I would look at some of those. They tend to trade with everybody else, and they, once they get going, they tend to trade at a multiple of everything else. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the Patreons. If you're not a part of the Patreons, make sure you're hitting the cash app. And we have Mike Novogratz.
we know he's a Goldman Sachs guy. And he talks about the Democrats, the politicians that were against Bitcoin. And we know the big ones are Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren. But it's all a part of the show, the same way Mike Novogratz is. While they're speaking against it, we had the big banks and big corporations implementing all this technology from the beginning. And we know they definitely was funding from the beginning. And then all of a sudden, we have Trump, who stated he was against Bitcoin, changing the tune on crypto. And now all of a sudden, we have all the politicians now all of a sudden ready for digital assets. Also, we have the bill passing to create the framework. Like I told you guys, the framework for regulation of crypto will be 2024, and we will be off to the races in 2025. Because we know the fourth industrial revolution rises in the emerging markets. They're going to flip that switch this year. And believe me, at the end of this year, guys, the drums are going to start getting louder. Remember, guys, it's an election year. They have to keep the markets looking decent. And we have the Ethereum spot ETF decision in hours. And it doesn't matter whether it gets approved or not. Remember, it started the masses speaking about crypto once again. We're on all the mainstream media news channels. But if you look at the price of Ethereum, Ethereum took a bigger pullback than the rest of the cryptos. So where the price that is at now, it should be. Remember when Bitcoin was at its highs, Ethereum was at 4000 That was in the middle of March. And we have Jack Mahler saying basically the banks want to get in on crypto to make a whole lot more money. And we know that's half the truth. The big banks and big corporations have been in this industry from the beginning. But then also, guys, what he leaves out is that the whole point of these digital assets is to move us over to this new digital economy, where the robots, algorithms, and drones take the economy over, pay each other with crypto, and the sheep go inside the metaverse. And these two topics let us know. Of course, we have NVIDIA, the chip maker, that's going to be controlling all these devices, now has a stock split. But then, guys, we have drones going to be answering to 9-11 calls. Guys, remember, your life is an illusion and TV is your reality. All these movies that we watched a long time ago is all coming into reality. Remember, guys, technology can be used for good or evil, but then also, no, my people perish from the lack of knowledge because they reject it. Not because it's not there, because they reject it. A whole lot of people are seeing things change, but they're not making a change. And that's the reason why I created this channel. For you to make a change. You're seeing all this coming towards you. I know it can be scary. Especially when you're new to this. But you have to start making moves. Because this technology is burling down. It's going to take a lot of jobs. A lot of people are going to be put out of work. Jobs you thought would never be able to be eliminated. We can clearly see that the machines can do everything a human can do. And of course they're trying to sell you that they're better than you. But remember... You're the most high. Yahweh's creation. There is nothing better than you. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows. When it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, I'm not a fan of any other cryptocurrency outside of Bitcoin. But I think there is a hilarious story as to why this is happening. I mean, I was laughing out loud. It looks like someone went to Gary Gensler and said, hey, buddy, you're not in charge anymore. And you'd have to think why that was. It's because banks and Wall Street are making money, right? Uh, banks get a really bad deal in today's market is they have to buy bonds that are performing awfully. And all of a sudden, they get a free market in this independent crypto thing, and they're actually making money. These markets have life. These markets go up. When governments debase their currency, these things perform well. And they got a taste of Bitcoin, and it was the best performing product that they've ever had. And they're like, oh, man, how many other pieces of crap are there out there that we can list as ETFs? And I literally think that's what's happening. It's a way better business to launch crypto ETFs than it is to buy bonds right now uh, based on the macro environment. So I think someone said, hey, Gary, sorry, buddy. Uh, despite you thinking that these things are securities, we need to make money. And that's what happened. But again, I'm 
a Bitcoin guy, I think all of this is a distraction and a load and nonsense. I think what they're trying to do is walk the fine line of how can we justify banks and Wall Street making more revenue on this industry. Because with all passive investing and central banks really trying to price control everything, this market has life. And if it has life, it means there's an opportunity to make money. Volatility is a good thing. People on Wall Street like volatility. So they're trying to find a way to justify and make happy and peace with existing securities laws while giving these Wall Street and these big banks like JP Morgan an ability to monetize this space and actually make money because the business they're in right now is, is awful. And I'm going through the report, but one line stands out. The next industrial revolution has become and a 10 for one talk, stock split that I just uh, read right now. Also announcing a 10 for one forward stock split of common stock to make uh, ownership more accessible to Ooh. employees and investors. The split will be effective through an amendment um, to NVIDIA's restated, uh, let's see, scan through uh, June 6th. So as of the close on Thursday, June 6th, they'll get nine additional shares of common stock. So again, 10 for one Ford stock split. Adam, what kinds of 911 calls would a drone, not a human, go to? So it's never going to be just a drone, but the, the main use case is responding to the highest priority calls. You know, violent incidents, crimes in progress, we're getting eyes on scene in a matter of seconds rather than minutes. Uh, can dramatically change the outcome. You know, it provides the responding officers better information so they know if they're heading into a situation where people are armed, they can see what the evidence looks like. Um, and it's really just a phenomenal tool for keeping yeah. communities safer. It keeps I, the I officers would, I, safe. I would also keeps imagine the, that it's not just sort of filming what's there for the police's advanced information, Adam. Is there an element where the drone itself could scare people off? Like something bad is going on. They realize here comes a drone. They hear it. They look up. They realize they're on camera and they, they stop whatever they're doing. Yeah, ab absolutely. It can have deterrent value. I mean, our, our drones uh, have speakers and spotlights, so officers can use them to establish communication with people. Um, one of the features that we're about to ship that I'm excited about uh, are flashing uh, red and blue lights, just like you find on a police car. So I think there's there's absolutely a deterrent element to it as well. And we've seen drones in public safety evolve. This has kind of been building over the last five years. They've been used at smaller scale by specialized teams. Um, but we're really at a transcendent moment now where the impact at that smaller scale has been so phenomenal that we're seeing, you know, NYPD, the biggest, most important public safety agency in the world, and hundreds of other agencies lean into these higher impact, higher scale kinds of use cases. Yeah, and I... I do understand that some people have concern about privacy, right? Your drone is flying over what could be a crime scene. They live next door. They didn't do anything wrong, but they're worried that your drone is looking into their living room. Yeah. Yeah, look, I think there are, are legitimate concerns about privacy and transparency and civil liberties. What I'll say is that I think the, the most advanced and most successful public safety agencies here take transparency really seriously. And you're seeing this with cities like NYPD, you're seeing it with Las Vegas PD, where they really go out of their way to talk with their communities about how they're using drones, why they're using them, the impact that they're having. And the, the impact is so phenomenal that I think the more that people understand it in general, the more comfortable they're gonna be. And the other thing I'd say, if you compare drones to a, a maybe alternative technology where you're just installing security cameras everywhere, I think drones are actually much better from a privacy perspective because they show up exactly when and where you need them. They're much more yep. targeted and precise in the information they capture, and they have the ability to change outcomes for the better. Well, it's an interesting technology. I've, I've got it right here buzzing now. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China.
But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust. And we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, Mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f- for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s- seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now- it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. I hate when countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar, because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be That will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. And we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, Nuno Crypto's Coinbase, BitChu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The Stock Channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, 
We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.